French President Emmanuel Macron is doubling down on his China-friendly remarks despite international criticism following what is being called tone-deaf, the trip to the country. Now, correspondent Alex Selvi is in Rome with the latest. The French leader saying his views on China are unchanged despite global backlash and concerns that his position is out of line with the rest of Europe. <laughs> President Macron, on his way back from a state visit to China earlier this week, declaring that Beijing's dispute with Taiwan was not an issue for Paris to address, saying Europe should avoid becoming followers of the United States. The CCP claims that Taiwan is a territory of China and will use force to ensure it, while Washington prefers the island maintain its independence. That's how we make democracy deliver for everyone. Macron's dissent prompting backlash from officials on both sides of the Atlantic, with former President Trump accusing him of, quote, kissing ass of Beijing. Macron responding to the criticisms during a trip to the Netherlands, saying he stands by his recent comments. La France, est pour le statu quo à Taiwan. France supports the status quo in Taiwan. France supports the one China policy and the search for a peaceful settlement to the situation. This is the position of the Europeans, and it's a position that has always been compatible with the role of an ally. But it is precisely here that I insist on the importance of strategic autonomy between allies does not mean being a vassal. That last line referring to the U.S., with Macron suggesting France doesn't have to side with Washington merely because it's an ally. This scandal coming as the French leader faces backlash at home due to his pension reforms, with protests extending from Paris to Amsterdam, as his speech on Wednesday in the Netherlands was crashed by demonstrators. Vice French democracy. They're accusing him of acting undemocratically by unilaterally pushing his policies, with Macron calling protests a price to pay. There are places where you can have violence. This is exactly places where this type of expressions are forbidden. In the meantime, the German foreign minister is in China for a state visit, with Berlin saying the goal is to send a clear message to Beijing that Europe cares about Taiwan and maintaining stability in the region. Back to you. Alex Selvi, thank you so much for that report. And the FBI arresting a 21-year-old Air National Guardsman named Jack Teixeira for the alleged leaking of classified information. The Pentagon calling the leak a deliberate criminal act. Now joining us for more is National Security Advisor and Trump 20 from Trump 2020 and retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel and President of Project Sentinel, Tony Schaefer. Tony, thank hey, you Sarah. so much for joining us today. Now, Good to be here. Lieutenant Colonel, what risk could the information that was leaked pose on Americans or our allies for that matter? It's significant. I, I was just on uh, Great Britain News last night, and one of the questions was, can uh, the British trust the United States? So clearly the British are concerned about this, rightly so, uh, and, and also our allies who are essentially uh, in er at every step now walking away from the Biden administration. You just talked about uh, the French president and what he's saying regarding China and lack of support for us. This is all linked. So everything you see failing relating to foreign policy essentially has been uh, shown in great detail in these leaked documents. So the Biden administration simply uh, has no ability to function in a cohesive way. And, and the fact that they are fall, failing across the board is showing uh, constantly now. You know, Colonel, it's great to see you. You know, we've worked together. Good to see you, Michael. Uh, it's good to see you here. But I got to tell you, you look at everything, and President Biden has to know that we are, we are literally treading water right now with our allies. And, yeah. you know, when you look at China, they're eating our lunch. But, but, you know, here's President Biden yesterday in Ireland when asked if, if he was concerned about the leak. Listen to this. Are you concerned about the leak? Okay, guys, it's time to go. Let's go. Cool, we got to move. I'm not concerned about the leak because I'm concerned that it happened. But there's nothing contemporaneous that I'm aware of that is of big consequence. So, Colonel, is it me or is he just, I mean, no one's buying that and there's nothing contemporaneous. This, this was, these documents were extremely timely and, in right. my opinion, one of the worst leaks we've ever seen in my lifetime. It is, Michael. And, and by the way, the network has allowed us, uh, my, uh, other contributors and myself, to talk about the fact that we were probably being lied to about numbers and about what was going on. And we come, it comes out to be true. They had boots on the ground. We're having a hard time supplying them. Turns out that uh, the Russians are have a seven to one kill ratio. These are all important things. 
that we have been saying, hey, they've been less than truthful. Now they're caught in the line. It's, oh, it's no big deal. And, and not only that, Michael, uh, now we have Brazil and Argent Argentina dumping the U.S. currency, supporting uh, uh, China, Turkey and Greece fighting each other, Egypt wanting to send weapons to Russia, uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia making up and becoming friends because the Chinese have brokered that. And Mexico is now calling out Biden because, you know, they're working more for the Chinese. They are the, the, the gateway for fentanyl. Everything we're seeing right now that we saw in these documents just indicates how badly managed uh, the whole foreign policy and national security program is. And Biden just, you know, basically pretending nothing bad is happening indicates to me that he's either not mentally there to understand the damage or, frankly, he doesn't care. And I think the latter is worse because that means they, they are very happy with the bad results of their policies. Well, that's the thing. You think about the old, the, the original infamous Pentagon Papers, and yeah. they were they were historical papers. You know, these were talking about things that had happened so far in the past. And right. look how infamous they are. And everyone remembers them and everyone knows what they are. These things are current. These are happening right, right. now. So, Lieutenant Colonel, do you think that we need a larger investigation into what sites like Discord or, or any things like this, how they are allowing these things to even get on their platforms in the first place? Because this is really damaging to not just America, but to the entire world here. I agree with you. I don't think you're going to get anywhere investigating Discord because pretty much anybody can post anything. What we need to get to the bottom of, of Sarah, is how this young kid, 21 years old, got a hold of these top secret documents. Look, I used to do uh, highly classified intelligence collection, and I would work to put information into those reports that were disclosed. Those were from a very high level. Uh, one set was from CIA. One set was from the chairman of the Joint Chiefs level. That's very high. When I did this, we would walk in with a folder. We would take out the content, show it to the principal. They would sign it that they watched it. We put it back in the folder and walk out. No physical artifacts were ever left behind. And the documents that this kid seemed to have are print uh, printouts of these highly classified documents. So there's a big piece missing here. And why on earth is the FBI and DOJ investigating the Pentagon when the Pentagon has adequate and substantial counterintelligence investigative forces? I started off as an Army counterintelligence special agent. Army Air Force could have done an e a, a credible job of getting to the bottom of this, but for some reason, DOJ, who's not been known for their integrity, is the one in there doing the investigation. This raises red flags and questions, in my view, of how this kid got these documents. This raises more than red flags, yeah. I, I believe. This is just such, such a big deal that I think really needs to get more attention than what it's getting from yeah. the government, especially from, from the president. L uh, Lieutenant Co uh, Colonel Tony Schaefer, thank you so much for joining us and for your insight on this. this Thank you. Good to see you, Colonel. This is a big deal, and it, it, I think our government's downplaying it, but, you know, the Colonel hit on something here. How, how does this happen? I've had top-secret clearances. There is a need to know. When a 21-year-old with no rank has access to this much current data on things that are currently in... This is wartime for Ukraine and yeah. Russia. So this isn't, like, something, as you said before, that was from decades ago that's historic. This is during wartime that, oh, and a war that we're supporting, by the way, Ukraine. So it, it, this is a bad situation. this puts that war at risk now. No question. No question about it. Now, now, they, now Russia knows exactly what the plans were, and now those plans are just out the window. That's right.